Hello. Yay. <laughs> so, hello everyone. Welcome to the last talk of the day. Um, where is it? Do you need to? Yeah. Should be. Is it? <laughs> like also like a, a tradition we had. Oops, sorry. That's it. I promised the guys to do a screen recording because the screen recording doesn't work usually. So, but here we go. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Well. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, this is Rainer. I'm Lisa. We are half of Schriftlabor. We have our little studio in Vienna, and we share it with a lobby of cyclists, uh, a florist, and with glyphs. Um, we do custom type. Our latest project was for the beauty retailer Sephora. It was a collaboration with Mucca Design in New York. And we worked on a super family of 22 fonts. Here's how it's been used. We were really excited. We photographed this in Seattle a couple of months ago. And this is the super family. It has a display weights in upright and italic. It has a text, a serif text in upright italic, a sans, and two script fonts. But we also do um, font production, which we like to call digital punch cutting. It's a term that refers to a metal type error of cutting punches. This is um, August Rosenberger. August Rosenberger was a famous German punch cutter and he realized a lot of uh, Hermann Zapp's designs. So we are kind of like the August Rosenberger of digital font production. These are some fonts we worked on. Um, this one is for Binnenland. It's um, Blender and this is Catalog. Um, so basically, we do all the things that type designers don't really like to do. We do the kerning, we do the hinting, web fonts, all these boring things. Um, this is Allegra by Sohuli. Or, yeah, we extend character sets, we add masters, um, we fix paths, and um, yeah, there's another one. Copios by Sibylle Hagman. It has labels and frames. Um, yes, and we do open type features. So we heard already a lot of open type about open type features today, so I hope this is not gonna be too basic. But wait, sorry. No. Oops. no that was the right one. Okay. Uh. So <laughs> okay, so about open type. Um, yeah, we heard already that a typeface contains a lot more characters than the ones that you can simply type on your keyboard. There are hundreds of glyphs um, with various numerals, or you have ligatures, and you have stylistic alternates, you have small caps, and um, to make them usable and accessible in, let's say, InDesign, you have to implement them with a feature in your font. And this used to be, well, using open type features used to be a very terribly complicated and tedious task uh, until the last update of InDesign, because now there is a button, it's down here, you can click it, and it shows you the open type features it, it offers. So yeah, this was going to be a rant about how badly it's implemented in InDesign, but they fixed it like two weeks ago. So, <laughs> so I'm too bad. Sorry about that. So, so now finally it works. Oh, uh, by the way, this is Premiere by uh, Thomas Gabriel, an Austrian type designer. It has a few nice stylistic alternates that you can uh, switch on and off. Here with the legs, you can put small caps with curved legs or without. So it is much easier now. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you a few other things that OpenType. Where is Yes. OpenType can do. 
several simple ones first. This is Henriette by Michael Hochleitner. Michael Hochleitner is also an Austrian type designer. It has fractions. So if you type uh, normal figures and you add here, you want to add a fraction, you just type it in and it would automatically switch into one. Same with here. Or then you have Ingeborg, also by Michael Hochneitner. It has a contextual alternate for the G. So if you type in a G, the first one will switch its ear, which is a nice touch. Also, one um, that you probably already have used a lot is uh, the ligature feature. So if you type a word, where the ascenders would collide, it turns into a ligature. But um, with Sephora serif display, we did something really different because Reinhardt really doesn't like ligatures. So um, we added a contextual alternate. So if you type the word, then the F will pull back so it makes space for the L instead. So this might be a more readable solution. We don't know. It's up to you. Um, there's the same thing for uh, the Q with the long tail. So if you put a letter with a descender next to it, it will pull back. So you see here. Um, then this is Alena by Roland Stieger. He's here today. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, it has a few different um, features that I can show you, like with numerals. Whoops. Sometimes uh, you have different sets of numerals. You, if you have an old, you can use the old style ones, you can use lining figures, or if you're designing a table, you can um, switch to the monospaced version. Um, then there are alternates for some of the letters, like here the A and the G, also the M is a little bit different, or contextual alternates where you can make arrows. It also has a small cap feature. And something that is really cool is if you type in caps only and you're writing in German, then and you want to add uh, a sharp S into an uh, all caps word, it will automatic, automatically turn to an uppercase one. So if you want to use that, want to use that, you can. Then, uh, well, as I already told you, we uh, designed two script fonts for Sephora. Um, they contain a lot of uh, different glyphs for every character. So we have, um, we have for every, every lowercase letter has at least uh, an initial one form, a medial form, a final form, an isolated form, and then some. So if you type, they change their shapes. Um, also this one. <coughs> um, this is something that is usually used for, as we heard today, uh, for Arabic typesetting, but it also works really well for handwritten fonts. This one has at least uh, eight glyphs for every lowercase letter. So pretty elaborate. Um, SuperNet is an even more elaborate one, it's pretty complex. It has 4,800 and more glyphs. So every, every uh, lowercase letter, as every letter and every number has diff different versions. And there's also, uh, we build a feature where if you type a couple of T's here, they, not only will they change their form, they will also change their angle and their baseline offset so they will wiggle around and look even more hand drawn. So, I guess. Then there's 
Ammer Handwriting by Wolfgang Ammer. Um, Wolfgang Ammer is an, is an Austrian cartoonist. Um, he makes cartoons like this one. Yeah, it's been a while since this has been up in the news. Um, and yeah, he, he gets commissioned by different newspapers in different languages. So um, what he used to do is when he has a when he had a German cartoon and he wanted to publish it in a, in a Spanish newspaper, what he used to do is he writes uh, the text in Spanish, then paste it on the cartoon, scan the whole thing, clean it up in Photoshop, and then send it to the client. So um, what we did is um, make a font out of his handwriting with of course, uh, alternates, uh, di different characters for uh, different glyphs for each character. Um, so they will always look uh, casually hand-drawn and he can easily put them in a layer in Photoshop and just change the text. Needless to say, Cherry Leonidas loves that cartoon. Yeah, yeah <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> this is Divan, by Natalie Divan. She's an Austrian artist. Uh, her husband owns a restaurant and she collected uh, handwritten letters for, from customers, from placemats, and she made a typeface out of this with different fonts. And every font contains at least four hands and they change in a cycle as you type. So we always get different results. Then there's Doggy by Johannes Lang. <laughs> this is a very readable typeface. It renders uh, letters as dogs. So um, they get longer for longer words. And there's punctuation, sausage punctuation, and stuff like this. It's, it's really <laughs> very usable. <laughs> but, um, and then, yeah. Fun thing is here, you can make the dog sit down if <laughs> you just type one single letter words. And um, there is a duck's horn, there's a poodle. <laughs> There's a chihuahua. <laughs> and this sucks. Because, yeah, <laughs> sure, why not? Um, then there's another one, fun one uh, by three people, by Nicole Fali, Igor Labudovic, and Martin Tiefenthaler, the Raps font, which also has a couple of different glyphs for every character, as you see. So, subtle changes, but, yeah, visible. It's inspired by uh, an archway in, in, a ca as a, in a castle in Raps and Ataya near the Austrian Czech border. And here you see how he gets the letters from the archway. This is Martin. Um, yeah, the cool thing here is that um, you can change uh, the numeric system used. So you can do this. And um, there's actually, actually next summer again a symposium in Raps and in August and it's in this beautiful castle and you should absolutely come. And you can register now and this is a TGA or TGM or vice Home member, you get a discount. It's really nice. It's a weekend full of type talks and food and drink and a castle, so it's amazing. And yeah, so this is it. I'll hand over to Rainer now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yes, um, yeah, uh, uh, the RAP symposium only happens every three years, so next year is unique chance. Uh, uh, if you miss that, you have to wait another three years to be there, so I can definitely recommend going there. All right, so we've seen uh, some um, uh, things that, um, uh, that open type features are used for, so a uh, little more sophisticated features. Um, and uh, some of you know that I have been teaching um, for 16 years at the Grafisch in Vienna. And I stopped this year uh, because I have too, much other, too many other things to do. But um, here, uh, I, in, in the graphic design curriculum in, in Vienna, 
uh, I was able to put in two years of, graph, uh, of type design. Um, and uh, here are uh, some of my students. We worked in a library in small groups, right? and which is great. And uh, you know, uh, in Aus Austrian law, uh, requires that I, I cannot take uh, recognizable photos of my students during class. Uh, this is not allowed. So I had to uh, ask my students to turn away from the camera while it's took them. And um, yeah, one of my students saw that photo uh, and afterwards said to me, I look like a pimp on this one. But I, I don't know if she realized what she was saying. Um, yes, so I always had to ask them to please not look into the camera. And so, and I asked them to show off the nice pixel fonts, which we did in the first semester, like this one, or yes, uh, my students are really great, <laughs> yes. And uh, or this one, yeah. yeah, they love me, yeah, wonderful. That was really a, a lot of fun. Um, and um, and the, the students came up with, um, uh, they, at one point they found out about open type features. And uh, they, they were trying to see what could they do with that. And for instance, there was uh, a guy called Ismail, um, quite a long time ago, one of my early students. And um, he built in like, um, you could say, copy protection into his fonts. So whatever you type, it, uh, the typeface would say, Ismail is great, Ismail is great, Ismail is great, right? So you had to figure out uh, to turn off common ligatures and then you could type anything you wanted, right? Uh, but if you forgot that and uh, by default common ligatures are on, then you'd only say, Ismail is great, Ismail is great. You know. <coughs> so, this kind of stuff. And at, um, at one point, one of my students, Belinda in this case, um, she came to me and said, could you, could, you, could you put an animation into a font? And that was long before SVG, right? So there was no, uh, so they said, yes, but you would have to do your own pacemaking. So yeah, I'm fine with that. And so if you, in her typeface, um, you type the word uh, girl one, then it turns into this um, uh, 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 prehistoric emoji. And then, and then if, and you keep typing periods, and then it, and it turns around. Hey, cool, right? So based on the number of periods that come afterwards, it will turn its head. Yes. And the other students saw this, of course, in class, and, um, and, they, and, and then they got carried away. So this was like a snowball effect. So you type glasses here, for instance, and then... <laughs> yeah? And this, I can remind you, we are here in text edit. This is, not, this is not some fancy software. This is text edit. All of you, all of Mac users amongst of you, uh, have this, right? Uh, or, or this one, I don't know why it's called BMO, maybe someone can tell me. So, yeah. Who used to own one of these, Game Boys? Oh, it's like too long ago, okay. <laughs> or, or this one, so, I don't know. Um, or Francisca, she, she put little jokes in it. So ice cream is the German word for ice cream. If you, if you type that word and type a few spaces, you get uh, the, the ice cream melting down, or car. <laughs> or, or you can have a bomb. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, uh, or this one. This one I like a lot. Um, so you type the word dance, and then you get this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, again, this was long before SVG and long before the next uh, version of SVG. The sounds you hear are not in this font. I do them. Or the word octopus. You type them. You This is in your text editor, yeah? I'm, I'm reminding everyone this is a font, okay? Um, or you type uh, Pokeswalk in BS typeface, for instance. Oh, you get this. Ah. Cool, right? <laughs> so, um, or you type, here in this one, there's a little story in there. You type a smiley face, out of it, like this, and then you just, type spaces, um, word spaces afterwards, and it tells you a little story. So if you eat like bad food, then that's what you get, right? So, and there's a few more things like that uh, hidden in her font. Um, I can't remember all of them, but, or this one. Um, I think, <laughs> this. or, or um, since we were talking about, um, it, it, and people, uh, the, 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 the students got carried away with the idea of putting um, games into the font, so references to like, um, uh, what would you call it, uh, vintage um, games. Like here, we have 
Uh, don't this. Yeah, we have Pong in there. Yeah, so you can not really play Pong. It's just an animation, right? So yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and or Snake. Anyone remember that? Who had a Nokia telephone at one point? Yes. And who played Snake? Yes. Okay. Yeah, everyone did. So um, I, mean, I think yes. And then you can. <coughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It goes for a long time. I think it has like. Um, yeah, and it has the game over. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, or, uh, for instance, uh, Alisa, if you type the word Space Invader in her, in her font, you get a Space Invader. And then you can have different Space Invader with, uh, by the, if you type a number after it, so Space Invader 8 or Space Invader 5. And uh, the great thing is, if you type uh, Space in front of it, you get the... <laughs> and you can actually sort of fake the Space Invader game in your, in your text editor. Oh, here, did, 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 and uh, oh, this one. And of course, <laughs> what's really great is you, you can shoot them. <laughs> 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 or uh, uh, this one's my favorite. Um, this was my favorite game. Oh, Pac you type Pac-Man, that's the Pac-Man ligature. Well, I, 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 this, it's true, I don't like ligatures, this is an exception. <laughs> so if, if, if Pac-Man has a bullet in front of uh, his mouth, then it opens its mouth. And then, of course, if uh, the ghost hits it, <laughs> then it's dead. Um, okay, um, and then there was Benedict and said, hey, with ligatures and stuff, could we actually really put a simple game into the font? Like, uh, like this one? Uh, rock, stone, scissors, or uh, I don't um, um, Schere, Stein, Papier, and so rocks. What, what is it in English? Scissors, rock, stone, stone, rock, scissors, uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> ching, chong, chong. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, and we we put that in there. Um, so, uh, if you you type three columns and then play, it's pl player one's turn. Uh, and player one is supposed to type one, two, or three. I always play this against my audience, and I've won only once so far. Um, so I'm trying to uh, very secretly put in maybe this one. Oh, wait a minute. So, sorry. So, yeah. And player two, you're player two. What do you want? One, two, or three? Two. Two? Two. two. It's a draw. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Now, now this is the, the second time. Now, if. Um, uh, it tells you, depending on whether you type one, two, three afterwards, it tells you who is the winner. So it's a more complex set of ligatures um, based on w and everything that's there is, if you um, set it to any other font, you see it's just three columns and two numbers, that's it. And there's uh, more co uh, complex, li yeah, complex, not really complex ligatures, but um, nested ligatures. Um, and, that, and they give you the, uh, the, 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 the course of the game. So player one played the second option, and player two played the first option. And, uh, and <laughs> you can figure out what the... And then the game is also documented, by the way. Um, all right. Um, 2013. I, uh, I was in Turkey at, um, at ISTYPE 2013. Um, Honor is here, who reorganized it. Um, um, they have great money there. They have, you see, the typographically wonderful money. Uh, as you see, uh, it's Arial in there, uh, on their on their on their paper money, <laughs> and it's uh, a color font with different shades of uh, pink and purple. <laughs> it's uh, fantastic. So uh, I, I stayed in an area called Galata where there's one uh, uh, neon letter shop after another. Fantastic place, and. We were there, uh, and I remember that Ono was like totally nervous because he held the conference in the middle of the Gacy Park protests. And some of you may remember that. And I, I you know, when you took a stroll in these days, and um, this is Taksim Square in Istanbul. So if you if you walked around there, um, then you could uh, actually see here. In the, um, it, it looks like very nice, but all these buses here are the team buses of the police, right? So, <laughs> and, and there's even, if you look closely, there's one of these water throwers in there, yeah. So like, ooh. And, uh, and uh, actually the, the protests escalated and there were, oh, it was pretty terrible. But um, what, when, when, when you walked, uh, and, and Ono was very, very nervous because he was scared uh, about the people attending it. 
And uh, what's great about um, Istanbul is the graffiti you see there. For instance, uh, this graffiti, great, you cannot um, make this up better. Uh, so, or closed mind, open mind kind of graffiti, great. Or this, correct me if I'm wrong, this says that gas bombs cannot kill your thoughts or something, right? Fikirler gas bombasi islamis, right? Or this, I love this one because there's a German graffiti in the middle of Istanbul. Um, and this one probably says, don't think, don't listen, don't look, and don't say anything, right? So, so uh, or this one, why, why? <laughs> <That's> fantastic. <laughs> um, and this one I like, this one says, um, in Gezi Park, breakfast is very good, so everyone please come <laughs> to Gezi Park. <laughs> and, um, or this one uh, gives you um, a hint what you should do if one of these water throwers uh, they hit you. There, there, there was the, at least the rumor, maybe they really did it, uh, I don't know, that they put uh, extra stuff into the water, into the water throwers that would like, yeah, that's the extra tear gas, in the mixed tear gas with the water. And, uh, there, and here it says, uh, Thomas so if, if, if it's burning in your eyes if from, from the Toma, um, Toma is, at, uh, is the, the Turkish word for the water thrower, I think, right? And portakal means uh, orange! Yeah? So it supposedly, at least, I don't know, I never tested it, uh, I never had to, luckily. Uh, if you put an orange in your eyes, then afterwards it sort of cures you from the tear gas. I don't know if that's true. And then I saw this one, Erdogan. <laughs> this is great. I thought, this is fantastic. This is great. This is like a typographic, um, subversive graffito. And I thought, I can put this into an open type feature. Right? And, um, and that's what I did. So um, I made a, a typeface, which is actually was supposed to be, it eventually will be part of, your, um, uh, uh, of a project that, uh, uh, that you started at, um, at, at one point. At, at, at the text invaders, that's right. Um, and, uh, and if you try to type the word Erdogan, right? So, uh, wait a minute, how did we, yes. So, so it was typographically correct. If you try to type the word Erdogan, you can't. It will always turn into Erdogan. <laughs> there's really, there's nothing you can do. It's, and, it's, and it's a so-called required ligature. Uh, there's, uh, what we didn't talk about, there's different kinds of ligatures. There's standard ligatures that are on by default, but, are, uh, but the, the user can turn them off. And there are discretionary ligatures that are off by default, and the user can turn it on. And there are required ligatures that are always on, and the user cannot do anything about it. And that's what, uh, what this uh, is about. So if you type it, uh, if you have a whole text uh, with Erdogan in it, it will always turn it into Erdogan, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's always Erdogan. And um, while we were at it, uh, I, I put an, an extra uh, thing in it, because if you type the word Gezi in there, Gezi Park takes its space in the typeface. So even like here, right? there you go. So every, every letter has six variants in it, uh, uh, punch to the right and punch to the left, and Gezi Park takes up its space, because they wanted to slope it, right? Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Another Gezi in the middle. The, well, yeah, so Gezi Park gets punched by Gezi Park. So <laughs> <laughs> Never tried this. So <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. But I was talking about games, right? So um, I didn't leave it at that. So I did put some um, subversive political messages uh, into the font. But uh, this is about games. Uh, let's go back and have fun. So uh, what I, what, uh, another thing I put in, into there, if you type that hashtag, and it just um, start typing uh, the, the figures, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, for instance, this is one, right? And this would be five, and this would be, I don't know, um, three, and this would be seven, maybe. Ah, and then I, ha, ha, I win. Yes, great. Um, and what it does, all you do is, um, is let's uh, something all, all it does is um, all you do is type uh, type numbers and you can play tic-tac-toe in your font right and of course it's a little boring uh, because um, you know it, it does figure out a few things uh, for instance um, it uh, does figure out um, who's the winner so it always circles the the, the winning threes Right? And it also figures out if you're trying to make a wrong move. So, for instance, 
uh, play the middle part again, then it scratches out, uh, and then you have to try again. Yeah, that's all. Yeah? So you can play tic-tac-toe, and if you change the typeface, um, uh, your moves are documented. So you play tic-tac-toe with one, five, two, three, four, seven, right? Pretty cool. But of course, that's boring, because uh, you either have to have someone next to you, but then you might as well do it with a pencil on paper, uh, or you play against yourself, it's also boring. <laughs> and so, um, so I figured, can I, can I make a more complex uh, game, something that's more fun? Sorry. And um, there is a, a movie from the early 60s called La Dernière Année à Marienbad, last year in Marienbad, letztes Jahr in Marienbad. <coughs> and I think from 1962 or 63, um, black and white movie, great. And there's a game in that movie. Um, I can actually, oops, sorry. I can actually show you um, a scene from the movie where, the, where that game appears. Um, this is, um, uh, uh, by the way, costumes are by uh, Coco Chanel in that movie. And, um, and yes, and this is, uh, uh, this guy is trying to make passes at, uh, at this guy's wife, right? And then this guy invites him to play a game with him. And he says, it's a game for two players, right? <coughs> And they play it with cards, but you can play it with any kind of objects. You can play it with coins or matchsticks or anything. And you lay them out in a, in a, in a triangle shape. So you have four rows of, in this case, cards. The first row with one card, the second row with three cards, the third row with five cards, and the last row with seven cards. Now, the players, you see that here at the bottom, maybe one, three, five, seven, right, cards. Um, and they players take turns, uh, uh, the players take away cards, as many as they want, but only ever from one row, right? They can take all cards from one row, and then, or, or just uh, one, doesn't matter. And whoever has to pick up the last card is the loser. So he asked him to start, and then, you know, he takes away all the cards in the last row, he takes away two cards from the third row, he takes away one card, <gasps> and then he realizes there are three rows left with one card each, and he's gonna lose because he's going to take the last but one card, and he's left with the last card, and he's the loser. <coughs> okay. Wow, fantastic. That's a simple rule, um, and I thought, maybe I can put that into a font, and um, that would be a little more interesting than tic-tac-toe. So if you type Marienbad Plus in my typeface, you get the basic Marienbad game layout. So you have the four, four rows, one, three, five, and seven matchsticks, if you will, um, and now you can, uh, the players take turn, and the first player, for instance, t uh, takes away two cards out of row B, and the second player takes all the cards out of row C, and the next one plays, um, takes the one card in row one. Ah, and now the, this player only has to take all the cards from row D, and the other player is left with the last card and win, um, and, and loses, right? So I just do this, and then it's game over, right? Okay, so again, but you saw I was playing against myself, right? Which is, again, a little boring. Wouldn't it be great if we, if we, I don't know, uh, could, uh, uh, could, could, could play against the, the computer, for instance? And as it turns out, I have an open type feature. <laughs> And you see here, there's an alternative stylistic set called Marienbart Artificial Intelligence. And I believe it's, up to this day, it's the first and only artificial intelligence uh, in a game in an open type feature. So, um, so if you activate it, <coughs> let's see what happens. Okay. All right. <coughs> now, I have to start, of course. So I play B2. And I, I, just, I just press the dash. Now, Tim is my witness. I only press the dash. And the open type feature is playing against me now. This is the move by the open type feature, D2. OK, so I have to play now. I, for instance, take C5. Let's see what the open type feature does now. <laughs> take this open type feature. And they're, they're, ooh, that's pretty much exactly the situation we had in the movie. And then let's see. Oh, and I lose. And it says, you lose, try again. Now, uh, at this point, and, uh, it, and actually, it's, this is, I'm not doing something predefined here. You can try anything. 
if you like, you can come come up afterwards and try your try to beat um, the uh, the AI. And uh, oh, I can lose again. So whatever I try, I always lose against uh, against this open type feature. Yeah, as it turns out, and. You, uh, you can take Frank's wiki app and look it up on Wikipedia, because it's explained there. As it turns out, this game is known as a so-called unfair game. The second player, if he or she does not make a mistake, can force his or her victory. Right? So, um, and the second player here is always the open type feature. And my open type feature always plays the ideal move and never loses. So there's no congratulations, you win in the font, you only ever <laughs> lose. <laughs> so I can safely say this is not only the, the only font that, is, uh, that has artificial intelligence uh, put uh, in, in, in it, it's also the, the only font that is unbeatable, right? <laughs> so, yes, um, um, and, oh yes, and sometimes, um, I, I made a special version of this font recently at the conference in Bangkok, and uh, Oliver will remember it. And it was, uh, uh, it, I happened to present a, a, a similar, uh, I happened to present this font um, uh, on, the ex on, on Jean Baptiste Levé's birthday, who was also present. And so I put into that font if, a, a JBL ligature, and it's. Um, <laughs> so, so, but. Um, so uh, to have a, it's a color font as well. Okay, thank you for your attention and um, and have fun with open dark features. Have a nice evening.